John chapter 5 through 13. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he was himself knew what he would do. Philip answered to him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes on the thought. The blessing is in the basket. The blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, Your blessings in the basket. Look at him and say, Your blessings in your basket. Lord, I love you. Thank you for what you've done and bringing us safely. For those that have come from far, those that have come from near. Lord, it is not coincidental. There's no luck or happenstance, not chance, but truly the Spirit of God that has brought us to this house at this time. As I stand before your great people, Lord, the people of the Most High God, the people that call you Father and you call sons and daughters. I pray, Father, that you would speak through me. You would anoint my lips uh, to speak boldly and clearly the simple word that you've given me for these great people. In the wonderful name of Jesus uh, and everybody said in Jesus name come on say it like you know who he is in Jesus name clap your hands uh, let's give God praise hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord you can be seated if you promise to stand back up when I say something true God's good I've got something scribbled here, someone I was going to say something nice about. Must not be God's will. I can't read my own writing. But I really do love everybody. The blessings in the basket. There's so many miracles in the Bible that take place that are exciting to read. And yet only one miracle uh, receives mention in all four of the Gospels. Um, the resurrection of Lazarus uh, can only be found in John, Jesus healing by the hem of his garment takes place in Matthew, Mark. Jesus walking on water is recorded in three, Matthew, Mark, and John. However, the miracle of Jesus multiplying five loaves and two fish is recorded in all four of the gospels. Each gospel records the story of a hungry crowd of 5,000 and there only being five loaves and two fishes uh, to feed them. and. Uh, now, I've heard, you know, it was 5,000 men, so that means there's probably, and, and there's some guys, man, they can get the number up to 50,000. But I think it's pretty cool, five feeding 5,000. <laughs> you know, like we don't have some exact, some numbers you don't have to exaggerate, friends. If you can take five pieces of bread and feed 5,000, you're pretty cool, amen? So I'm cool with the story just being 5,000, but we'll say 10 for all the people that want it to be bigger than what the Bible says. So there was 5,000, five pieces of bread and two fish. Now these loaves were not like a sunbeam or whatever name brand loaf you guys have here in, uh, in, in Arkansas. Uh, but they were, uh, uh, they were just like a, the size of a, of a man's hand, but more like a, a biscuit. So he didn't have five big old loaves of bread. He had five biscuits and the fish were not the, the kind of fish you tell me you catch that I've never seen a picture of. You know what I mean? Like you, you photoshopped that bass. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was, they, were, they were small. Perhaps uh, we would compare them more to a, a little sardine. So you got a dude with five biscuits and two sardines. Seems like little. But little is much. When God is in it. Y'all must have a lot more than I do, because that gets me excited. 
whether it's a rod in the hand of Moses or it can part the Red Sea or it's just a little stone in the sling of a shepherd boy, it can still kill the giant. Whether it's just a little hope that's left at camp meeting, little is much when God is. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you came to camp meeting lacking, but no, you're here and you've got something. So something's going to happen to you. when God, oh come on, y'all waiting for the good part, it's about as good as it gets, hey, he's about to take what you came to camp meeting with, and he's about to make it great, oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah, 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 this boy, he's, he's probably 15 to 18 years old, we don't know, it don't matter, there's lots of things we, uh, we can read in the Bible and learn from the Bible, and yet there's other things that are left out of the Bible. So we look quickly tonight as we learn from the things that were left out of the story. The little boy was used by God. It's interesting, the Bible does not give us his name. It does not give us his parents' name. Some of us think that God cannot use us because of our heritage or where we come from. And yet, just on the other side of the coin, there's the dude that thinks he can be used because of who his parents are. Hey, Junior, I don't care. I don't care if your dad's the district superintendent of the this or that and the other than the secretary or the president, your cousin, nephew's uncle. Come on, I've had people introduce me. I don't even know their name. I just know their family tree. Like that's going to impress me or something. And that's how you come to God thinking that because so-and-so's your cousin's nephew's uncle's great brother's bishop, that you're going to be blessed. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if your dad's a prophet or a painter. It doesn't matter. Come on, young people. I've come to tell somebody. You, you've been hanging your destiny upon who your daddy was. Who cares? la di da So what? It doesn't matter. Tonight, can't be in 2016. i got to make up my mind. I'm here for me. I'm here for Come on, somebody. That's not, come on, preacher's wife. It ain't who you're married to. Come on, you think you've got a blessing linked to your name just because, no, no, no. There's a blessing just for you. There's a blessing not because you're the preacher's wife, not because you're the senior pastor's wife, but because you're his child. There's a blessing for you. You ought to shout like the God just gave you a word. Oh, I've come to tell somebody. There's something here. It ain't matter who you are. It doesn't matter from so we don't know his name we don't know what kind of personality he has some people you know some of the greatest preachers i've met uh, they're 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 not sanguine uh, they're introverts uh, god will use it doesn't matter and he does he doesn't tell us what he looked like does he have black hair or brown hair does he have blonde hair i'm hoping he was balding you know what i mean he might have been bald and that's in my mind he's bald Thank you, Jesus. All the bald men say, amen. amen. Hey, be proud of it, guys. Let's bind together. Balding, binding together. Praise God. Amen. We don't know what color his skin is. Uh, this, you know, the news can't, they can't write an article without telling us how tall he was, what color he was, where he's from, all this stuff. But the Bible don't tell us his education. We don't know if he had a degree. We don't know if he was from a Harvard University, if he was a high IQ, or if he's GED, high school dropout. We, we don't know. We don't know. We, we know. We don't know his name. We don't know his height. We don't know how much money he had or where he's from. We don't know who his parents are, his skin color, his personality type, or his skill set. We don't know his goals in life, his aspirations or dreams. You know why? We don't know because it doesn't matter. All we know is what he did have in a little basket. We know he had five pieces of bread and two little fish. You spend, we spend so much time worrying about what we don't have. So much time invested on all the things that we lack. And you came to camp and it overwhelms you as you look around at this big building. And you come on somebody. But if God needed what you lost in order to bless you, you would have
it, 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 we, we think, I was thinking about this and I think, man, think of all the other things that could have happened. What I think's odd is you got 5,000 men and out of 5,000 people or 50,000 people, you've got one dude with bread. I'm like, I can't believe out of 5,000, ain't one other dude, one other lady got some food with him. So I'm thinking, what on earth? Surely they can. But you know, you got to know there was five fish. It was five pieces of bread and two little fish. And they didn't have refrigerators. They didn't have them Yeti coolers. They brought me this Yeti cup. Keeps the ice cold seven days. That's the slowest drinking person I've ever met in my life. Seven days to drink. <laughs> my, my goodness, man, I drink it in about seven seconds. And when you refill it, go ahead and put some more ice in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that thousand dollars for a, my goodness, man. You, that's crazy. He didn't, if you got a Yeti cooler, man, you the man. You got yourself an overpriced thing to keep ice. My, we are blessed in America. Pay a thousand dollars to keep our ice. I mean, come on, somebody. Yeti, my. He didn't have a Yeti cooler. He had a basket. It's hot. Got two fish. Now, I don't know about you, but it gets hot. Fish. I guarantee you, he was sitting all by himself at the camp meeting. You know what I mean? Why ain't nobody sitting next to that dude? <laughs> you ain't bleeding. Have you smelled it? Smells like, I can imagine the dude sitting next to him saying, my goodness, dude, what, what is wrong with you? You stink. Well, I gotta hold on to these fish. Well, oh, come on, man, I threw them out just, I threw them out when they started smelling bad. I, I just, I, they, no, hey, look around, nobody else got fish, nobody else got bread, nobody else is doing that, nobody, everybody else has already tossed out the fish, everybody else already tossed out the bread, it's not that big of a deal, why, why, why are you, why are you holding on to that, look, well, I gotta hold on to it because my mama said, she said, it, that, son, whatever you do, uh, don't get rid of the bread and don't get rid of the fish, uh, I don't know why she said it was so important, uh, but I'm We got tired of people calling us names, but there was one little boy that had cherished what the rest of the world says was not. God's roaming the earth and he's looking through Christianity and he's saying, is there still a church that cherishes what the rest of the world says is insignificant? Well, why do we do that? And why do we have to do that? And why do we... Hey, truth is, I might not have an exact Bible verse in Scripture for every single thing. There's some things we do because my daddy handed it to me and said, Son, this will work and you'll understand it one day. Hey, dancing still works. I know, I know, I know. Today, we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Hey, friend, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I care more about my salvation than I do your feelings. And the Pokemon, oh, on. I've come to tell somebody God's gonna find the church that's held on to worship. They've held on.
Why are we beating the drum? Because we've been beating it for years. And baby, it got us here. We ain't going to stop because it's going to get us there. Well, all the other churches, you know, all the other pastors, they let their ladies wear this and look like that and paint the wrong. Come on, somebody. We just trim it a little. It don't matter no much. I mean, everybody else is doing it. And we are like it. In the, in, the, in the circle of Christianity there, Nobody wants to hang out with us uh, But hey we can identify just fine uh, With the little boy Sitting there with our basket uh, saying, Maybe nobody wants to sit next to me uh, Maybe I'm ostracized In my community uh, Maybe they don't let me sit on the council Of the brethren of my city uh, But I'm not letting go of holiness I'm not letting go of righteousness I'm not letting go of worship uh, I'm not letting go of my basket uh, Because my blessing uh, My blessing I wish I had somebody just clap your hands uh, like it's 1982. Like the blessing still. Come on. Come on, Elder. How did you clap when you got the Holy Ghost in 75? The blessing still works. It still works. Feel the Holy Ghost. To tell somebody we're not letting go. I don't care what your neighbor said. I don't care what you, what, what Charisma Magazine said. I don't care what they're writing. There is a people. There are men that still believe hero Israel. The Lord our God is one. There is still. My goodness, if that don't get y'all excited. I'm sorry, y'all in for a long week. I said there's still a church. And you're standing with both your feet planted in a place. That believes you must be born again of the water and the spirit. Or you cannot that you must be baptized solely in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins that you've got to receive the Holy Ghost and the evidence of that reception will be a new tongue you've got to live holy and separated from the world we believe a man looks like a man a woman looks like a woman well come on somebody we got a world don't even know which bathroom to go to but you're in a place where you can find your purpose it's in your basket it's in what you got left over I don't see any hankies pulled out. That must mean y'all ain't sweaty. You can't, come on, I'm already like 18 minutes in this message. Some of y'all ain't sweating yet. What you doing? We're kidding. We're having church here, ladies and gentlemen. Get your hanky out and start shouting until you got some sweat coming down your brow. Hey, come on. I said, get your hanky out a little bit. You ought to be sweating by now. Come on. Hey, I'm 35. I've been this my whole life. We run, we shout, we dance, we sweat. Our tie gets crazy. Uh, I'm almost done. It ain't gonna be much longer. He had he had five thousand people, five pieces of bread, two little pieces of fish. How many? Y'all go and sit back down. Like, man, I wish I was y'all. Wish I could sit down. I gotta stand the rest of the time. It ain't really fair, is it? But that's how we treat the preacher nowadays. He stands, we sit on padded pews, and if it's not the right temperature, my God, we're going to let everybody know. <laughs> you know, Jesus, in his day, he sat down, and y'all stood up. But this is the philosophy of Christianity today, that the pastor's here to serve you. The truth is, he's here to serve God. 
I don't want a preacher that's out for me to be pleased. I want a preacher that's out to please God. I said, I want a man of God that wants to please God. I want a pastor that's more afraid of God than he is my little mean text message. I said, I want a preacher that's more fearful of God than he is my Facebook status or my Twitter feed. Hey, somebody, I want a man that'll preach the truth. You know, it might sound old-fashioned, but it works. Come on, the blessing ain't in some charismatic dude that's here to comfort you. The blessing's in a little old basket that's been handed down to us from generation to generation. five pieces of bread how many did he need how many did he need did he did he really need five pieces of bread to feed five thousand yeah he did yeah he did if he didn't need them all he wouldn't have taken them all i can imagine because that's the principle that's how god works see i can imagine andrew coming by little boy He's like, I got some bread. Well, man, I noticed you sitting over here by yourself, everybody making fun of you. Yeah, they're not going to be making fun of you for very long, though. You're going to be the only one recorded in the Bible. You're going to be the one, the only, and every, every, and every gospel will record you because nobody remembers the dudes that don't give it all. story. You know the dude that gets the stories is the dude that's shouting, running, dancing, heartbroken, but he's giving it all. That's the, hey, you want to go down as a legend? You want to go down in history as great? Give it all! You think you're going to feed 5,000 with five pieces of bread? Now, this little boy's got some faith. He's like, man, if you think that Jesus can feed him with five, I'm sure he could do it with four. <laughs> now, he can do it with five, then I can believe he can do it with four. So I'm just going to keep one for me just in case it don't work out. I'm just going to keep one pair of pants in case it don't work out. Just going to keep a little, just one CD in case it don't work out. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my voice completely in case it don't. Hey, let me tell you something. It ain't going to work out. It ain't going to work out if you came to church and you, you, you got a little, little in reserve just in case the Jesus thing don't work. Hey, the only way this works is if you say, all right, God, you want the black. Now, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is, Jesus. You can have all of me. I would think God had somebody that would come shout and dance like you plan on giving it all. It's going to take all your praise. This can't be somebody I said it's gonna take all your praise well I went to camp meeting didn't get nothing I ain't get hey reason you didn't get nothing is because you didn't put all of it in come on look at your neighbor and say I'm about to clap like I'm gonna give it all
It's all up. And the miracle didn't happen. He didn't take one loaf and say, watch, this is what we're going to do so you don't have to be worried about giving it all. Now, the miracles didn't start until the basket was empty. I've come to preach to somebody at Little Rock Camp Meeting. The basket's empty. You've walked into this room. You've been through hell, you've been through high water. You walked into this place drained. You've been through so much. You've been, you've been, it's like there's nothing left to give. I, I have them say it to me all the time. This world is draining ministry. I've got preacher, they're sucking me dry. I got nothing left. You ought to put your hands together because you're right. You're right. Right where the multiplication starts is when you've got done maybe I'll be done when y'all are done whenever you're ready to get your blessing you go ahead and just get it he started multiplying all of a sudden they start picking up the leftovers where's my disciples at come on start picking it up disciple you picking up leftovers all across this building they're picking it up they're picking up leftovers there's you gonna go home and see God don't just fill cups my cup runneth All of a sudden, Jesus standing up on the stage at camp meeting, and there's the little boy. And there's how many we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo! Twelve. Now I've always been taught twelve baskets were for the twelve disciples, but the disciples didn't contribute anything. They couldn't even believe. See, he didn't just multiply the bread; he multiplied the basket. And the basket wasn't for the disciples. The basket was for the little boy. And when he went home from camp meeting that night, he said, <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm going home. To, I got to, hey, go, let's go home. To, you ain't going to believe what happened to me. You ain't going to believe that camp meeting 2016. You ain't going to believe how it went down. I went up there again and I dumped my basket out. Hey, look. Oh, mama. I cherished what you gave me, Mom. Now I know. I know why you gave me the basket, Mama. I've come to preach to somebody at camp to tell you you're about to go home with multiplied basket. You ought to shout a little with me. Come on, you ought to dance a little bit with me. You ought to dance like you're about to get it on. The boy received. I don't care how empty you are. It doesn't matter how empty you are tonight. You can give it all. I'm preaching to a mama. You got a little sardine in the bottom of your purse. You got a little backup plan in the back of your mind. And you visit it every once in a while. Well, you know, I still, at least I've still got that little... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you do, because I'm preaching to you. But you know what you've been living with? You've been living with regret. I'm preaching to somebody who's been coming to this thing for years. I've been preaching to you for years. You sit about the same spot every time. Do about the same thing every time. 
and get about the same thing every time. And you go home, you're like, man, I, I wonder what would have happened if I'd have just, maybe I should have done that crazy dance he was talking about. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have cared so much what my friend that's a carnal idiot thinks anyway, just run up there and get my blessing anyway. Maybe I should. You've been, you've been regret. Hey, let me tell you something. You'll regret what you leave in the basket. When you step from time into eternity, you'll, you'll regret what you didn't give at this camp meeting. I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but I read it once from a man named Bill Borden. He uh, was 21 years old back in the early 1900s and he was one of the richest, one of the richest families in North America. And his, uh, his calling came, he was 21 years old, to be a missionary to Brazil. And so he answered the call. He said, you know what, I'm going to go. He gives away all of his money, all of his money. In the back of his Bible, the evening after he had given away all of his money, he writes the words, no reserves. His father the next day calls him in. The president of Borden Company calls him in and says, son, you're 21 years old. I'm offering you the presidency of the company, if you will stay in North America. You've given away all of your trust fund money, but I will return it back. We'll, we can build it back up. You're 21, you'll be the president of the largest, wealthiest company. He turned it down. He said, God's called me to be a missionary to Brazil. He turned down the presidency of one of the largest companies in North America. And that night in his Bible, he wrote, under no reserves, he wrote, no retreats he set sail within a month to Brazil where he would build countless churches and orphanages helping many till five years later at the young age of 26 he contracts a deadly disease and with weeks he's dead they return his Bible to his parents they flip through it and arrive at the final page there they read, no reserves, no retreats. And in the faint handwriting of a dying boy, it said, no regrets. When I leave this camp meeting, I'm walking out without any regrets. I'm not leaving anything on the table. Nothing's gonna be left in the basket. I will have danced until my legs could dance no more. I will have shouted until my voice could scream no louder. I will have clapped until I have exuded all of my energy. But I, I, I'm gonna give it all. I wonder if you would grab somebody by the hand and say, baby, I ain't gonna 
But there's a battle. There's a battle for what's in our basket. There's a war trying to, trying to steal. The devil knows if he gets our, we're the last thing, the hope for this world. What we're doing here right now, this praise. You can't find this anywhere else in the world nowadays. I'm talking Christianity included. It's, we are the last defense. When the Philistines set up camp against the Israelites, they did it strategically in Judah. For they knew if we take their praise, we've got them. Nehemiah. They took over and they got Judah complaining. Not focused on praise anymore. For they knew once we get the praise. The Bible's praise and when they praised, when David praised the Lord, they talked bad about him. He was foolish praise. It was, and now we, we it, it, hey, we're not going to lose episode. The style of our praise is biblical. It is foolish. It is crazy. But we're getting to where we're like this. That, that, that ain't the kind of praise we're talking about tonight. Hey, it, it's the first night your blessings lead to how you praise God right now. You ought to look at your neighbor. Say, man.
The devil can cite scripture for his purpose, said William Shakespeare in The Merchant of Venice. There are many out there who simply use one scripture to teach on baptism. Two noted examples. The Trinitarians use Matthew 28, 19 out of context for their baptismal formula. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the Church of the Latter-day Saints or Mormons use 1 Corinthians 15.29 to baptize for the dead, or what is called baptism by proxy. What else shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? However, we find that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. This was necessary under the law in the Old Testament. We read in Deuteronomy 17.6, At the mouth of two or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. And in the New Testament Paul repeated this same principle. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Every single apostle used Jesus' name baptism as their sole name in their formula. Examples are the following scriptures. Mark 16, 15 through 17, Luke 24, 45 through 47, John 20, 23, Acts 2, 38, Acts 8, 12 through 16, Acts 10, 48, Acts 18 and 8, Acts 19 and 5, Acts 22, 16, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Romans 6, 3 through 5, Galatians 3 and 27. So nobody ever used a misapplied title baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's because they knew the name of the Father was Jesus, and the Son was named Jesus, and the Holy Spirit was sent in Jesus' name. Peter said unto those people in the book of Acts, they should save themselves from this ungodly generation. That's in Acts 2.40. Are you willing to follow the word of Jesus and the faith of the apostles? Or be like those on the day of the Lord who claim Jesus was theirs, yet they were cast away because they were still in sin. In Matthew 7.21-23. God bless you as you obey his word.